it'd be one of those things you look back on your golfing career and then know that you've, you've achieved something, you've played with the best in our championship. So I think that would be a huge deal. You know, you're essentially only ever three rounds away from playing in, in my opinion, the, the greatest major that there ever was. I think I can make it every year. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think I could. So that's how I look at it a little bit. Hello. We do have a left-handed rental set, actually. I re-gripped some the other day. Didn't hit any shots like that. That's a wrap. My, my first open memory is we went to Hoy Lake when I was 16, when Tiger won. He played with Ernie on the Saturday, I think, and Tiger just hit this softest seven iron that just went like that. And it's pitched and it's gone, probably moved this far. Everybody else is rolling out like 40 feet. And he was just so focused and he just, you know, so we've got 50,000 people, whatever it is, you know, however many people cheering for him, he just like, it just looked like we weren't even there to him. That was the first time I'd ever been to a professional event and I just thought, I don't think it's gonna get any better than this. And then on the 18th, we couldn't get a spot, so we were quite close to the walkway, standard 16 year olds looking for freebies, people were throwing stuff over. And then I just Tiger walked past and he's in like, Stevie's got him like this and he's just sobbing. He's absolutely sobbing. He's the first major he won after his dad died. And he was just like, I, like inconsolable. When I think of Open Championships, I think of that week, because I think I kind of really got a felt, like a feel for it that week, really, how, how big an event it was, but also, you know, how good you have to be if you want to win that event. I think I can make it every year. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think I could, so. Let's have a look at it a little bit. I remember making it through at Abridge uh, with my old man on the bag, Big Andy on the bag. Uh, I think I shot 69, if I remember rightly. Southport and Amesdale, yeah. I remember being a little bit nervous, probably more so because probably more so because I was playing with Peter Uline, to be honest, and he was like meant to be the next big thing, and we had. You know, I was, what, 21 or something like that. And I wasn't, I remember not playing overly well at the time, as in like, I had that one good round, but I wasn't, do you know what I mean? My game wasn't in great shape. I guess it felt like the, the occasion or the fact that I wasn't playing well enough to kind of, you know, make it across. I think five under made it for, for two rounds, which to make it is, you know, that's pretty attainable really. And that's kind of, it's kind of, I felt that every single time I played finals really. I think I probably talked up the winning score in my own mind to be too low. You know, the following year was North Berwick. I was thinking you're gonna to have to get to double digits under par to make it through here. I think setting those, you know, those unrealistic expectations of shooting double digits under par before you even get there is just stupid. You have to just play. I've kind of fallen victim to that in most of the open qualifiers that I've played in, really. For me, you know, obviously growing up playing in the UK, I think the Open is the major, it's the golf tournament. I mean, it's the only major that's kind of on our time zone, it's courses we relate to. And I think there's something that makes that a little bit more special for some reason. I wouldn't class myself as an overly patriotic person but winning the Open Championship would be, or playing in the Open Championship to be honest, would be, it'd be one of those things you look back on your golfing career and then know that you've, you've achieved something, you've played with the best in our championship. So I think that would be a huge deal. I'd love to play and I'd love to do well. It is kind of the, the thought of, you know, playing in Opens or playing on the European Tour, the PGA Tour is kind of the, the carrot that's kind of constantly dangled in front of your face really, you know, you feel like it's attainable, otherwise you wouldn't be still playing, you know. Good. Uh, uh, good girl, right, off you go. <laughs> it kind of all happened 
just like that really. You felt like COVID was not really, it was just something that was in the background that nobody really knew the severity of it. And then all of a sudden, yeah. all of a sudden we were like, hmm, we, uh, <laughs> we, might, yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah. might, we might be struggling to get home here. So we had to, <laughs> well, we had to cancel a lot of our trip. Obviously when we first got back, um, it was really strange. I had like quite a busy few months planned with coaching, obviously like March, April time is kind of the opening of golf season really. So tournaments wise, I had a schedule planned. Coaching wise, I had quite a lot of stuff planned. And then all of a sudden, you know, it was just like, right, you can't do that anymore. It was like two weeks, another two weeks or three weeks. And it was, it was sort of the, the unknown, which was the strangest thing. And then obviously Maggie was there as well. She was pretty young. She was a bit of a handful, she still is. This is where you see terrible look. She's, recall is awful. Maggie, here! Oh my! Ah, yeah. Don't speak too soon. She knows the RNA is watching. Look, look at that. I ended up actually doing some work with a friend in a warehouse for that time, which uh, admittedly it's, it's, it gets you allows you to appreciate what you get to do normally. Um, but obviously with baby coming, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I couldn't really I couldn't really afford to take that time off. So <laughs> we met in uh, we met at uni. Yeah, we met at uni. We ended up having a bunch of mutual friends. Even though we went to quite a big uni, it felt like the sort of friendship circles were quite small, kind yeah. of. So it felt like, you know, when you know when we did sort of get together and stuff, it felt like it was we already knew a lot of each other's friends, yeah. didn't we? Without yeah. really knowing each other that well. I moved over four years ago. Got married two years ago. We now have a baby. baby. Due at the end of the summer. <laughs> What did you say on the longest four years? No, <laughs> I said it felt longer than four years. Being married to me really dragged. <laughs> no. Hi guys, how are we doing? Really well the other day. Yeah, well Thanks guys, way. appreciate that. Open qualifying that has been part of my year or part of my schedule for, you know, since my amateur days really. I can't remember the first time I played in it. I probably would have been about 19 maybe, something like that. But yeah, obviously initially just a little bit disappointed and obviously for us it's sort of our major as well isn't it and it's sort of the highlight of our golfing year so I suppose initially just kind of a bit gutted. Personally I'm obviously in a, a totally different place than what I was this time last year so from that perspective it's been a more of a event for my personal life definitely than my, my golfing life I would say. Whoa. Room in that. Typical this, a coach coaching the sun and playing in the rain. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. uh. This is the, this is the textbook coaching stance. This is yeah. like, like, yeah. like, like that. I'll be honest, you know, I was since I you know I always pretty much coached my family for years and years. Um, and then when it came to coaching, sort of the thing that I had the least experience of really was the beginners. That's nice there, mate. Um, and, you know, that, and that honestly, that's sort of one of the things I found the most rewarding, really, because, you know, you take someone who's, you know, pretty much having air shots, they quite often learn in a group scenario as well. So I've done a few groups now where, you know, they've learned together, now they all turn up and play together. And it's sort of, they've got their own little WhatsApp groups and it's like a little community. And obviously if, you know, if I'd have done a rubbish job, you know, they probably wouldn't be still playing. So from that perspective, it's extremely quite rewarding, which is something that I didn't really, didn't really know. Yeah, you want to get most of that fun like on the grip. Really. Right, yeah, because I'm currently yeah. here, aren't I? Yeah. Might help you release really, it. Oh my might... God, that feels really weird. Was it? It's going to help you release it though. It does feel good. I haven't even thought about that. I don't think I've, you know, I've ever gone through a, a golfing year where I felt like I haven't improved. Definitely the biggest thing at final qualifying is 
scoring's never as good as what you think it's going to be. I think everybody's in the same boat and everybody's dream is to play in the open. And obviously you get some great players play, but you know, it's over 36 holes on a Lynx golf course. It can be sort of anyone's game really. Yeah, I think it is a nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh. oh no way! Did I actually hit the pin? Like you said, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, when I working in the warehouse and stuff was, you know, it wasn't that bad. But it was, you know, it, it does make you appreciate what you get to do most of the time. It was. I didn't ever have one moment where I was like, right, I can make it now. It's sort of. It's something that I've always been kind of working towards and golf is a little bit different to where you don't you're not reliant on a football manager or you know someone along the way it's your own personal drive it's your own will to do it it's not as though you know someone calls time and you you know you've got no chance it's on you which is kind of the beauty of it really you know you're essentially only ever three rounds away from playing in in my opinion the the greatest major yeah, there ever was so I think for however much it is 150 quid or whatever I think I'd always be taking that punt and I can see myself taking that punt for a long time. It's a huge like long-term goal for me to play in the open. Try and stay patient and kind of let the score come to you and if you're not two three under through you know nine holes or whatever it's, you've still got plenty of time. And it's, you know, if you can get to five, six, seven under through two rounds, you're in with a great chance of making it. 